What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me and being here today on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. We have... We have, I guess I would call it maybe an extension of last week's show, but if you didn't hear last week, don't go running away. It's all good. This show will also make a ton of sense to you just on its own. And what are we going to be talking about today? Well, it is self-confidence, growing that inner confidence within you, within me, within everybody. And confidence is something that so many people struggle with and for really really good reasons as well and so as a result of that it makes it maybe even more difficult for people to figure out okay how do I build my self-confidence like I I kind of get you know why my confidence isn't where I'd like it to be but what do I do about it and many of us have tried all kinds of different things and then we kind of just slide back to where we were. It can be discouraging. It can feel a little defeating. You can even maybe get to that place of like, why bother? This is just who I am. This is me. Well, I would love to change that for you today. Give you some insights and some understanding as to why changing our self-confidence can be a bit of a challenge, and it can, absolutely, you're right. But it doesn't mean it can't be done. Not at all. Like, when I think about how I have changed and continue to change my level of confidence within myself, that sometimes it just really, it really blows me away. It really does. And it's, it's fabulous. And once you start on the journey and you start building little bits and a little bit more and a little bit more, and you recognize the changes that you've done, then you start to build this little library, if you will, in your mind of evidence that you can do it. And then it just builds on itself in the exact same way that when we have low self-confidence, that builds on itself as well. So we're going to flip that around. We're going to change that today. We are going to create a little bit of a toolbox for you so that you can look at changing this if this is something you wish to do. Now, last week, you know, we were talking about, you know, like stop with this idea of reinventing yourself. I talked a little about the word uh, reinvent and how it means that you're you're just creating something that has already been created and that really that's a redundant behavior that's not something we want to be doing and I left the show saying okay we're not going to be looking at recreating ourselves or sorry reinventing ourselves reinvention is not going to give you something new it's not going to bring in that innovative that new energy that we're looking for but what we will do today is build on our self-confidence. And in doing that, we will be creating the person that is actually really deep inside each and every one of us that we just don't have access to in this moment. But we never, ever go to that space of not being able to find that person unless you choose not to. And that's cool, not a problem. But if you're really looking that you want to change an aspect of you or you want to grow in your confidence, then hang in here and stay with me for today's show because you will get the information that you need to start that journey. The inner workings of our mind and our subconscious 
are really the deciding factors in how we feel about ourselves. This image we have of ourselves, you know, the self image, if you would like to say. And so if our self image isn't as high or as where we would like it to be, then that will cause every single one of us difficulties. You see, you can't outperform the image you have of yourself. You just can't. There is going to be natural barriers there that are going to come into place and keep you within the limits of how you view yourself. So one of the ways to go around this, maybe not go around it, that's not a very good term. One of the ways to change this, to lift that barrier or that ceiling that you have is to work with building your self-confidence. There's so much we can do. Now, one of the things I want you to understand with this is it takes a bit of courage. It might take a lot of courage depending on what you wish to change. It takes people stepping into that space of allowing themselves to be vulnerable, to have no judgment of themselves, no criticisms, and to be open to truly looking at what is keeping in place the way you view yourself, the way you see who you are. Also, it's really good to know and to remember that the way we see ourselves is often extremely different than the way somebody else sees you. We are so critical. We are so hard on ourselves. I mean, could you imagine? Oh, well, I guess some people do this, but really most of us don't. Could you imagine speaking to everybody in your world, family, friends, coworkers, somebody in a store using the same language, the same tone, the same energies that you use when you speak to yourself all the time? This would likely translate out into the world as being kind to another person occasionally, perhaps rarely, perhaps not at all. And that's not okay. Yet that's how we speak to ourselves. To build that muscle of speaking kindly to yourself, to look at yourself, see attributes, see qualities, takes practice because we have hidden it away. And we're even told, don't do that. No, you're being boastful. You're, you're going into your ego. You are being whatever. Well, that may not actually be true, but it has certainly caused you difficulties up to today. One of the ways we try to help each other with self-confidence is we'll say to someone, you know, I know you can do it. Sometimes it's get, it takes um, a slightly different direction and says, I know this is within you. You can do it. You may also hear, I've seen that in you. I know you can do this. But if you have never experienced what this person is talking about, you've never witnessed what they say they have seen, then truly it, it tends to fall on deaf ears. Like you're just, you're not taking it in. You're not receiving it. You don't know what to do with this information because it's so contrary to what you believe. No matter what someone says to you, if you go get a haircut, and maybe I'm speaking to more women, but I think I'm also speaking to men as well and of all age groups. But if you get a haircut and you you just so hate it, like you just, like you're like, ah. And, I, and you know, unless you're going to either cut it shorter, if that's an option, or get a wig, you're stuck with it for X number of weeks until your hair grows and you have that ability to change it. You hate it. You absolutely hate it. And I don't care how many people are going to come up to you and say, 
that's really cute. Oh, no, oh, that looks nice. Or, oh, it's really not that bad. It's going to grow. You're fine. Same thing. You can't hear that. You can't accept it. Because when you look in the mirror, you see the confirmation of your belief that this haircut is awful. I had one of those a few years ago. And nothing anybody said to me made me feel any better about it. I chose to hold on to that belief and that image of myself. Was it helpful? No. But did I know better? I guess not because I didn't change it. This is also what gets in our way of our self-confidence because we can't hear what other people are saying to us, even when it's the truth. There is ample opportunity as we're growing up for us to be programmed in a way for our thinking as to how we should be presenting ourselves and how we are thinking about ourselves that keeps us in a really difficult loop or trap. I've said many times, and I want you to hear it again, everything is meaningless until you give it meaning. Now, this is all well and good because this is likely a new statement or a new way of looking at something for almost everybody. So you've got 20 years, 50 years, whatever it might be, 80 years of thinking and looking at things differently. If they've all built up together, creating what you are now looking at as who you are. And from that, you have determined your own personal level of self-confidence. So here, first thing you can do is you can go into remembering, right? Write it down, repeat it. Everything is meaningless until you give it meaning. So work at, hear yourself, catch yourself when you go to give a negative meaning to anything about yourself. Well, in general, the world would be great, but for today, about yourself. Stop adding into the pile of beliefs that are holding you in trouble. Start to create, even as just start to create the pattern to stop that. Even if you're not to that place where you can start to change it around, just stopping that is step one. Recognizing how you're speaking to yourself, how you're thinking about yourself, how you see yourself. Catch it. Stop it. And if that's as far as you can go, that is awesome. That's okay. We have so many times where we have tried to break out of the role that we see ourselves in. You may have applied for a new job that you knew was a stretch, but your employer thought or saw something in you and hired you. You start, you go, you're there, it's day one. You are very nervous. If you're not careful, how you see yourself is going to kick in over the next number of weeks or months. You will perform to that level and then you may no longer have that place of employment. You could choose to leave or you could be asked to leave. Our belief in ourself, in, it got in our way. Somebody saw something in you and was going to work with you to help develop that and to create more within you, more for you, for your future. But we didn't buy into it. So we don't have it anymore. We add to that confirmation of, see, I knew, I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew I couldn't do that. What that person saw in you truly is in you. So let's look at how do we find that within ourself? How can we trust that that attribute, that quality is inside 
that we can access it, bring it out. And then in that example, be able to actually excel at that new job or a new activity that you want to learn, a new area of study that you maybe think, ooh, I don't think I'm smart enough for that. I don't think I can do that. You can. It may take some creativity. It may take thinking outside of the box. It may take bringing in some kind of different support systems. But it's there. It is there. So when we come back from our first break, we're going to go into looking at this and identifying what has been keeping us stuck so then we can unpack that and get into changing it all. So we've got a lot to talk about in the next segment. So please don't go away. And I'm so happy and thankful that you're here with me today on the Inspired Choices Network, a fabulous place to hang out and, uh, you know, be with myself, Karen Leslie, you know, your host for Cultivating Kindness with Karen, as well as many other amazing hosts and different topics that are brought to you 24-7. <laughs> Think about how you are looking at yourself as we go to our break. And so we can unravel that a bit when we get back. So hang in there. Don't leave. We will be on a, a break just for a very short period of time. And we will see everyone really soon. Thanks, everybody. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. During that break, I, I had these thoughts coming in like, I think we would have such a different world if everybody was willing to work on their self-confidence and how they see themselves. Our self-confidence is either raised up and supported or just like battered down our whole life. It starts when you, you go into school, it may start before you go to school. I mean, like, I mean, I think of an example that I used with my three boys. Now, I don't know if this bothered any of them or not, but they all walked at different ages. And I remember when my third son, you know, walked a little later than the first and second. And, you know, talking about that later and kind of joking and saying, like, why isn't he walking? Is there something wrong? Like, what's, you know, what's going on? That was not a kind thing to be saying. It was information that was factual, but repeating it and probably the energy of it would not have been a kindness. So it can start really young. 
you know, your grades in school, they're either really good and you're shored up and you're praised, which can bring pressure and all other things too, or you're streamed into a certain direction because other people believe you can only do so much. I believe that. I believed I was, I was average. That would be what I would say. I, I didn't excel. I didn't fail too much. I had a couple, but I, you know, I was average. I was okay. And then over the last couple of years, I've learned that I have a neurodivergent brain. I think differently. I respond to things differently. And I always have known I learn differently than other people. But it certainly wasn't the way the school system was when I was in it. And so that built over time and contributed to my level of self-confidence. Now that I understand how my brain works and I'm open to like slowing things down, hearing what I think, um, watching for my response to something, accepting that that is what works for me or what doesn't work for me and voicing it and choosing what does work. And then when that happens, it's like miracles come through. Like I can do so much more. I can learn in a different way. I can learn quicker. I retain, it gets different. A really, a really good example, just on this past weekend, um, my husband was looking at something um, using um, artificial intelligence, AI. And he was really getting into it. Some cool information was coming up and it was all information for me. And I said, we need to stop. Like, I can't listen to what you're reading to me. I can't take this in. I said, it was being done on an iPad. I said, I need to do this on a computer. I need to print this out. And I gave all these reasons as to why it wasn't working. And I went right into overload, like tap out. I had to walk away and he's just looking at me. And I said, it's okay. I said, but I, I can't do this. And then after a few minutes, I, 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 I literally moved away from the iPad. Energetically, I can't actually be by them for long. They really affect my body. Um, but then I was able to break it down and say, this is how, this is how I write my talks. This is how I organize programs. This is what I do. Here's my process. This is what works for me completely opposite of what works for him. And then when we changed it around and I got my things printed out and I got my highlighters and sometimes I literally cut things up and rearrange them and put them in different spaces and it can look quite ridiculous. I joke that I'm a frustrated arts and crafts person, but that's what works for my mind. Now that I know that I'm a lot happier. I feel much better about myself. Versus in the past, I would have just sat there and zoned right out, not retained the information that was being given to me, and then felt really bad about it after. <laughs> I've got laughter in the chat room here. <laughs> but it was, I mean, that's that's the way it went. But this is only possible because I have taken the time to understand how I learn, how I think, how I respond to things, and then work with it. So I can change my level of confidence of doing something, you know, from how it was when I was growing up. You know, nobody expected a, a whole lot from me. I was not wonderful to hear, but that was, I guess I became okay with it. Now look at me. I'm here on a podcast that's being broadcast around the world. I have a strong mission to help change the perspective on mental health. Our self-confidence is a big factor in your mental health, in my mental health. We don't really give it the importance that it requires. Having self-confidence is really important in shoring up and improving your mental health. One of the reasons that it is so important is the process because you need to go in and look at who you are. You need to go in and examine these thoughts 
that you've been holding on to and that you have been believing for decades that are ruling your life, that have you wearing these different masks as to how you see yourself. They are causing mental stress for you. They are causing depression. This is causing you to not believe in you. Okay, you probably believe in yourself to a point. But you can believe in yourself more. You can have far greater inner confidence by going within. When we have low self-confidence, we look outside, we go to the external for validation, for answers, for suggestions. Like We don't trust our thoughts. We don't trust our intuition. We don't trust that we can find the solution. But we can. It takes some practice. You'll have some stumbles. You'll have some oops moments. But each one is filled with valuable information for you that you can then work with and use it to grow confidence in yourself. You know, when I looked at the cards for this show, they all talked about having confidence, uh, not confidence, sorry, all talked about having trust within yourself. You know, saying things like you were born with a certain task or a certain um, objective when you came into this world. That doesn't go away. But learning to trust who you are and to trust what that is, you can build the confidence to be able to fulfill it. We're all intuitive, maybe in different ways, but we can all learn to trust what we know. Knowing far outweighs actually confidence. Knowingness, that deep knowing within you will never lead you astray. First, you've got to get rid of the programming. You've got to get rid of the doubts. You have to stop second guessing you and build that trust within you. And then that knowingness within you goes beyond confidence. It really does. You know, the when I looked at the word confidence from uh, etymology, it was firmly trusting. And it used the word bold you know, to have trust or reliance on self. To know you have the power, the resources, the self-assurance that whatever it is you're looking to achieve, you can do so. Right? It's like it also talked about having a certainty of what will be next. All of that is possible. Even if at that moment, what you're faced with doesn't look like a fact for you, doesn't look like a truth for you. By going within and trusting who you are and building your intuition, building your knowingness, then you can start to trust in everything around you and in all of your choices. You'll start to build the evidence that things are starting to work out for you. You'll start to tear down the beliefs that you can't do something or that you are not a particular type of person. No matter how strongly you may wish you were, that belief, if it doesn't get taken apart, it's going to stop you. We all have the ability to change the narrative as to who we are. It's not creating a false image of yourself. It's not faking it till you make it. It's not creating a false confidence. It's going in and knowing truthfully how you're put together and seeing how you had been put together 
based on the opinions and judgments and perspectives of another person. Multiple people, so many people. Right? Another person's objective for who you should be is based on their own programming, their own judgments, their own fears. They're not there really to help you build the confidence in yourself. They're there to keep you in a box that they think would be a really good place for you to be. And they may believe that that's safer for you. But it's never safe to be in a box that doesn't allow you to be who you are, doesn't allow you to be who you're meant to be, doesn't allow you to express who you are. Self-confidence, that allows you to express who you are, to be who you came here to be. We're going to go to our break now. Who would you love to be? Not as in another person. No, don't go there. But what attributes would you love to find within you that if you brought them forward and you instilled them into your belief system that would then enable you to fulfill any dream you've got, what would that look like? So think about that while we go to our break. We've just got a short one here. We'll be back shortly and we'll carry on with this com confidence building conversation. You're here with me, Karen Leslie on the Inspired Choices Network. If you have questions, please, you know, send me an email, karen at karenlesley.ca and Leslie is L-E-S-L-I-E. -E. All right. Don't go away, everyone. We're going to be back just in a couple of minutes. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. All right, let's flip this show and turn it around. You have an idea now. You really get it as to where all the difficulties have been in really feeling amazing in your confidence in yourself. So let's let's look at building that up. All right, I did give some ideas in the first couple of segments. So if you've just joined, you know, after the show's done, you know, go back and have a listen to the beginning. This idea I've mentioned numerous times about having the ability to sort of be vulnerable and go and look within. There's many ways you can do that. One, which is a really good one, is hiring a coach, is working with somebody else. Going into that space of vulnerability and true openness, true acceptance, and the ability to read the energies that are coming forward, that's a skill set 
And it is difficult even for those of us who are really skilled in doing it, in doing it for ourselves. That's why I have coaches. I have two, you know? So it's it really is important to work with somebody. There can be things that are going to be brought up that might be very surprising to you. And that can elicit emotions. You could have some fear. You could have some shame. You could have like a, just like a, a blank, like, oh, I can't even go there. I can't even figure this out. And that's okay. What you need to start is just the belief in yourself that this is worthwhile doing. One of the ways that is very helpful for many people is meditation, or maybe you don't want to call it meditation, but just finding a quiet, safe space, one that where you won't be disturbed. You could put on something like a solfege, I don't even know how to say it, solfeggio frequency or some type of music that, you know, is calming, um, uplifting, or somehow feels really good for you. You can bring crystals in. You could have them around you, ones that would help you with releasing or ones that build confidence or however you want to approach it. And just sit quietly and ask to be shown who you are. Ask to be shown the capabilities you have, the strengths that you have. And pause. Write down whatever comes forward. Don't judge it. Just once you start writing, just let yourself keep writing and you can be amazed at what can come out. Another option is use guided meditation. And there are ones specifically designed to help you with confidence or to help you to see yourself in a different way. They're brilliant. They work really well. I've used them. I still use them. When you get an idea of some of the attributes that are within you, or you have an idea of an attribute you would like to find within you, you would like to cultivate and have it to be a part of you, using guided meditation or going into meditation on your own and being present with the image, and this is key, the image of how that person shows up for you, how you show up being that person is so incredibly helpful. See yourself doing the tasks, speaking if it involves speaking, doing whatever it is from that space of being comfortable and confident in it. It's like an athlete that is rehearsing their their routine if if they're a dancer or shooting baskets if they're a basketball player or seeing themselves run on the track whatever it might be but they visualize over and over and over again and so really should we see yourself doing what it is you would love to be doing ask yourself who would i need to be to be confident in this activity. Or ask, what would a confident person be thinking right now? Or what would a confident person do right now to achieve this goal? And let the answers flow through. Write them down or speak them into a, a voice recorder. And then see yourself doing what they're saying, being what you're hearing. It's like watching it on a big screen in front of you. And then let the emotions come in. Are you happy? Are you joyous? Are you feeling brave? Um, whatever that is that's coming forward, bring the emotion in, feel those emotions. 
see yourself on that screen in front of you with those emotions moving with ease as a result of the answers you got from those questions. Right? Go back to the replay, write them out. And then you're seeing yourself on the screen. Step into that image of you. Be there and look around in first person. You are now that, that you on the screen doing the task, giving that talk, learning a new computer program, figuring out how to ice skate, whatever it is. Be there, look down, look at your feet. What are you wearing? How are you moving? What is around you? Touch things. Feel what it is to have that ease with being that you in that activity that you desire to have more confidence in. Then rinse and repeat. Do it again. Do it every day. Do it again. Spend time with that one element until it becomes a part of you. And you actually start to get that knowingness that that is in you. This is all part of the work that comes through, you know, after you've unpacked all of those programs, maybe not all of them, but enough of the programming that it will allow you access to see this, be this, and feel it. Create through imagination that level of self-confidence you desire to have. Now your mind's going to go, yeah, but it's in an, it's in your imagination. It's not real. It's not going to make a difference. Totally wrong. That's programming. Your mind works through images. You know that saying, once you see something, you can't unsee it. It's true. Your mind works through images. It the images are stronger when they are accompanied by emotions. And the more you visit them, the more real they become. This is why, you know, the basketball players, they see themselves doing everything, how many steps they take forward, how they're holding the ball, where they're looking when they are releasing the ball from their hands, every minute detail they're looking at through imagery through imagination, and they bring in the emotions. What does it feel like? What is their body doing? What are their muscles doing? And they get very particular, very specific. And they make the shot and they repeat. We can do the exact same thing with the goal of raising our self-confidence. See the you you wish to create. Step into the you you are creating. Be the you you have created. And you can do all of this with imagination. You can do this through meditation. And then you can bring this forward into your actual reality. Because the... The more you believe in this new level of confidence you have, then energetically you shift and change. And as a result of that, you actually will bring into your life, into your physical world, the representation of this new person, of this new level of confidence that you have in you. And you do this enough times and you repeat this enough times and you build that evidence, that truth, that it's there for you. And those old programmings, they just fade farther and farther away. They lose their strength of keeping you tied to the past. They lose their strength of keeping you tied to opinions and beliefs given to you by others. You create a new level of knowing yourself. You create a new knowingness 
about who you are. And there's nothing better. It's amazing. When you get a real sense of these new skills, new emotions, perhaps, new way of thinking about yourself, you open up so many opportunities for you to experience them, to live them, and to reinforce them in ways that you, in this moment, you have no idea about. None. It's not possible for you to know it right now because you haven't done the work that's required for you to be able to truly imagine it. There was a time when I couldn't imagine half the things I do now based on my level of confidence. We're going to go to our break, our third and final one. Before I do, I want to quickly mention to you that I have developed a brand new program. It's a four-month program, and it has come about <laughs> really quickly. It's called Mind Shift Journey, because when we are changing the way we look at ourselves or the when we are building our confidence, it is a journey. It does not happen overnight. It really doesn't. Well, maybe never say never. I don't know. But mind shift journey is shifting from doubt and moving into creating greater inner confidence. You'll hear more about it. I'm going to talk more about it. And one of the reasons, no, sorry. One of the things that happens when your self-confidence builds as you take action quicker. I had the thought of the program. Last week's show gave me some insight. This week's show on confidence gave me insight. I announced a four-month program. I didn't have a name for it till yesterday, but I took action on it because I knew I had a knowingness that I could do this. I had a knowing that it's required and it fits within my purpose of changing the perspective on mental health and knowing that our self-confidence impacts our mental health. What a dagger it is when we work from doubt. Mind shift journey. All right, we're going to go to our break. As you know, this third and final one's a really short one, so don't go away. Thank you for being here with me on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. I love having you here every week. All right, we'll be right back, everybody. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, everybody. All right, we are winding down, as you know, by the time we get to our last segment of the show. So let me see if I can wrap all this up for you. It is a firm belief of mine that our self-confidence directly impacts our mental health. How we view ourselves is integral to how we show up, how we think, how we behave, what we avoid, what we embrace, what we're afraid to do, what we would love to do, but maybe aren't choosing it. Our self-confidence is an area of our being that is worth every effort to improve, to work with it, to get to understand how you are thinking about yourself. Truly understand it. And yes, work with somebody. 
work with a coach, work with someone who has the skill set to bring you safely to this place of understanding without judgment, without regret, to let it go, move it out. And then you make that space where you can start to look inside and see these amazing attributes that are within you. You can start to dream and think, wow, I wonder if I could do and fill it in. If I could do that, what would it be like? Dream. Give yourself permission to see yourself in a way that you have not seen you before. If you can imagine it, it's in there somewhere. It's just a matter of finding it, doing a little digging, cultivating it, watering it, showing it some love and some kindness. As you do that, you are showing that love and kindness in you. You are building your ability to trust who you are and trust that knowing you have inside of you as to who you would like to be. When you trust who you aspire to be and when you trust the new things you would like to bring into your life, you bring such enrichment into you. You bring empowerment to yourself. Your energy changes. You feel different, literally, in the cells of your body because you're changing the chemical responses that are going on inside of you. As your energy changes, your behavior will start to shift. Those around you will start to notice differences. Some will like it, some won't, and that's okay. Because when you like you, when you have confidence in yourself, these perceptions others have of you have less and less meaning to you. They have less control over you. Now, as you're going through this process, you're going to hit some obstacles, for sure. Because it's going to take a little time for those things in the back, you know, to really fade away. And you're going to have thoughts from the past that are going to come up to challenge you. Remember I said, embrace that. There is really great information that comes forward with every obstacle and every but that surfaces. And again, often we can look at these with greater ease through the assistance of someone else. Don't stop when the obstacles come up. Remember that they're going to be there. Amp up the tools you've got. Use them more often. Those questions that I suggested you go and write down, work with them. They're, they're really good questions. What would someone who has the level of confidence you aspire to do in a particular situation and step into being that person. Go through the scenario I laid out for you on how to do that and practice it or write it out or record that little segment of the show and repeat it. Download the show and have it there for yourself. There's so many ways you can do this. So before we run out of time, and I've only got literally like a minute, next week's show um, is really different, really different. It's I'm going to talk to you about how I work with angels. I work with them all the time, and it's not an area that I share with everybody, but I'm going to share it with you next week. One of the areas of being more confident in with myself and helping you to step more into who you are. And as always, I'm sending you waves of kindness, knowing you can do it. You really can. Thank you for listening to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. 
Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can find Karen at KarenLeslie.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.